This is the Flipper 900 ST, and it is built in Finland, and designed in Finland. And this, guys, is what it feels like to hook through a turn with a twin 225 horsepower Mercury's. Currently doing that at 21 knots. It is the middle of winter, or almost the middle of winter here in Sydney town. So it's legitimately the coldest day of the year. And what is lovely right now is I'm just bathing in the beautiful warm sunshine and protected from the breeze. So today we're gonna feel this boat out with the 225s. So we're gonna feel her out in the flat water. We're gonna do that now. And then we're gonna dart over and find some rough water and just experience this hull to see whether this is a boat that you could transition from an adventure boat into something more like what I'm gonna call the modern sports cruiser. You're watching Dan's Boat Life. My name's Dan Jones. Let's do this. Okay, now we're in some slightly more protected water out of the rough and tumble of Sydney Harbour. I've increased the engine revs and we're sitting on 27 knots SOG in flat water right now. Got a westerly wind blowing that way, so I'll increase my speed whilst we go downwind for the drone to allow to catch up on us. Um, yes, you can go up to twin 300 horsepower, you can go twin 250s, but this is a three ton boat with a lot of features. That's gonna be demonstrated in the walkthrough. Um, and do you need the bigger motors? Having driven this boat for an hour already, I'm gonna say no for the type of person who I believe is gonna be interested in this. Um, but you keep watching and let me know what you think. Because right now, at 28 knots, that's a fast cruise. I've got very little trim on the motors. I'm just manually trimming uh, with the trim tabs here and you have options to go to uh, zip wakes as well. But I got a fuel flow of 30 liters a side. Now let's just slow that down. Just slow it down. And let's just look at our fuel flow at say 25 to 24 knots. That's 20, 25 liters a side. So 50 liters in total to get a speed return of 24 knots. Now let's get full speed. Yeehaw! So wind vortices. Just here, so I can sit back in this very comfortable seat through a couple of waves, I might add. Feel the solidity of the hull. We'll do that in more detail when we get out there. And what I was trying to point out is I feel very warm. The wind, it's venting through at this angle. So even my guests who would be over here are gonna be quite protected. I got 33 knots speed return. 45 litres aside. Let's give it full speed. A little bit of a trim up. Look at this. I'm getting 38 knots. 38 knots and a half. Not in flat water. So I'm going to say this is a 39, potentially 40 knot boat in the right conditions. So that's, that's totally acceptable for a twin cabin. Neat, neat little toilet, heaps of space for you and your mates to have lunch, style of boat, the modern sports cruiser. Stick with me, I'm going to cut straight to some offshore adventures. Let's do this now. Okay, welcome back guys. I've changed location and we are uh, just barreling in on middle head because I want to take you through some waves. It's got a little bit of ferry wash on us now. One. Two, feel that landing, just did that 3,800 RPM and a speed of 24 knots. And now I'm just gonna speed the boat up a little bit and talk to you about what I'm discovering before we do go through some actual waves. It's moderate conditions today. We have westerly wind blowing offshore and an easterly swell coming in, no more than a meter today, but we do and we may get a couple of rollers uh, to bounce over and just describe to you what we see. Um, so at 4,000, actually 3,900, let's just bring up to 4,000. At 4,000 RPM, I've got a 27 knot speed return, and that's giving me a fuel flow of 29 liters a side. Now, if I bump that up to 4,500, which I'm gonna do in a sec, 
that's going to give us what I would refer to as the fast cruise. Because at 4.5, you're still under that 5,000 RPM uh, where your fuel flow might go a little bit ridiculous. And see, I'm only at 4.3 right now, entering the waves pretty soon. I've got 31 litres a side, speed return of 28. Give it a little bit before these waves catch up on me and I've got to slow down. There you go. 4.5 gives us 29.30 knots speed return. So now I'm actually just going to settle back into a more sensible speed because we are going into a wave zone. And just get that speed below 25 knots. I have my trim tabs. These are Bennett trim tabs um, operated just forward of the throttle and in bouncy water it is possible just to rest your fingers on them like I am now and operate them correctly. The throttle base just here um, is super racing, super comfortable and allows me to rest my palm right here and operate the throttle with my fingers. So in a scenario like I'm in right now with these waves coming in from starboard um, and the boat getting some vertical acceleration, bow up and down, I'm not gonna accidentally over rev it. I've got my key starts just behind me. Nobody's gonna knock them. I like the position of that because some boats, the keys can be near your knee. Not a problem for me because I've got the shortest legs in the world, but if you actually have normal size legs on many boats that I test, you got a chance of accidentally knocking the keys. That's annoying. Now feel these waves. Just rolling with these. It's parting the water out to the side and I'm doing that 3,800 revs, 25 knots. My takeaway so far is that this boat feels solid in terms of the construction. No surprises, to be fair, because it is built in Finland and this seems to be what they do. Let's go across these waves now. We've got some kids sailing here, so I don't want to interrupt them. I'll actually just go around their course marker here. So now I'm taking that swell on my starboard beam pretty much straight on the starboard side and we'll just feel that. Pretty comfortable, you know, from a guest perspective who are gonna be at my location or further aft, they're gonna have even less movement, so that's fine. Now let's go into the waves. Notice that I'm doing all of this from the sitting position. Now I'm 5'7 in height. Um, you do have a slight loss of visibility just here with these pillars, as you would expect with any boat, um, but not a problem because I can move around quite comfortably. Now, do I see any benefit in standing? Oh yeah, actually. Yeah, that's quite nice. Even for my short little legs, I got great visibility straight over here. The boats, you know, through these waves, got a predictable motion, so I'm not worried about banging my head on this. And we are just gliding over these swells right now. Now these are over a meter. We're actually really comfortable. Really, really comfortable. I'm not gonna head out today, because it is, here's a big one. Okay, good landing. That was at 24, 25 knots. And now, yeah, I'm, as I was saying, I'm not actually gonna head, oh, is that a whale? No, no, that's just people. I'm not heading offshore because it's whale season and you've got every chance of getting in the way of those lovely creatures, so let's just keep it inshore today. So, whale season, I don't mean whale hunting season, I mean whale watching season, for those of you who are gonna get cheeky in the comments. So, heading back with the waves on my port bow now. Yeah, this is solid, this is good. Fantastic, okay, let's go into some protected waters and demonstrate how you might approach parking and anchoring of this vessel because some of you who are gonna be coming from your commuter boats and walk around decks, I think that's gonna be your major question as to can you manage a boat where you don't have direct access to the side. So uh, let's find out. Okie dokie, so we have come to a sheltered part of the harbour to simulate um, parking because some of you guys are going to be thinking about uh, how can I manoeuvre this boat when my previous boat was an open style boat or had walk around decks and uh, I'm here to discover that with you. So first things first, let's just try transverse thrust. So uh, engines on the centre line, one going forward, one going reverse, just 
uh, moving my body stance to the side. I always like to do that. See how my head goes forward and aft and my right hand has really good control of the throttle. So what I'm learning right now is that the weight and the design of this hull allows me to have really great control. Look, I'll speed that up a bit for you of this boat in a close quarters maneuvering scenario. So that's, that's, uh, that's a piece of piss. But if you um, are not used to doing the transverse thrust, we have a bow thruster that is just forward of the trim tabs. Let's just see if it's any good. I'm going to starboard. Quite talky actually. Let's go to port now, stop that. Yeah, okay, so that's, that's gonna help you in a maneuvering scenario. So what we can then add to that element, let's just think it through. You're coming in alongside and your distance from the helm to the dock, it's not this way because you have a window in our way. So you've got to get to the back corner just there or up these stairs and over the front to, to get a line over. So you need to buy yourself some time. What you can do is what's called a side slip. So just turn the wheel, say, imagining the dock is on the starboard side, turn the wheel to port and then just click it in forward and thrust it to starboard and it walks the whole boat, hopefully it's coming up on my drone shots, it walks the whole boat to starboard and then you can just reverse the wheel and go reverse throttle and then starboard thrust and that'll actually just give the boat that momentum and uh, the time that you need because it'll, it'll, it'll be pressing up against the dock to then step out the back grab your stern line, sort it all out, um, and we've got a midships cleat right there. So I would uh, just think ahead like you should do on every boat in every parking scenario, and I would have a stern line and then another line off my midships cleat ready to grab. Your fender's out, obviously, if you don't have fenders on the dock, um, and then come in like that. Let's just see how she goes in reverse. Predictable, predictable. Um, she tracks quite well in reverse. Um, and then, final thing, the anchor is operated from right here, next to the bow thruster. From a seated position, I can see the anchor right there. I don't even need to stand up, clearly, if I do my transition, flip up bolsters like so. That seat goes forward enough, by the way. Um, I can see even more. So I, I, I believe, with a little bit of training and enough practice, if you're coming from a completely open boat or a boat that has walk around decks, do not be afraid of stepping into this Flipper 900 ST because she's only 30 feet. She's not a great deal bigger than perhaps what you've already got. She offers a great deal in terms of the accommodation and she'll still fit in a rack and stack. So. There are some really, really uh, good points in favour of this boat for someone who's wanting to step up without going too crazy. So I think, I think that's everything with regards to the test drive. Guys, if you like this content, I make it for you. Get on and support my Patreon. If you like being here, I like having you. Um, subscribe to the channel, give us a like as well. That's super, super beneficial. So if you want to see a detailed walkthrough, that is a separate video to this one, um, click on the link coming up on the screen now and I'll link to that. I hope you get some value from it. Cheers.